Callista's passive is Martial Poise, and it has two important parts. First, Callista cannot cancel her basic attacks. Once she's winding up that spear, there's no going back. Second, entering a move order during Callista's basic attack windup makes her hop in that direction after the attack is complete. Martial Poise will probably take some getting used to, especially as Callista builds attack speed, but it gives her incredible mobility in combat. Note that if Callista leaps backward, she gains a bit of extra distance. Yeah, Callista used to gain more range when she used her passive backwards. Hmm, this champion has quite the story, doesn't she? How on earth was it possible that at one point this champion was seen as the best champion in the game for months and is now seemingly irrelevant? What happened? How did she have such a fall from grace? Everybody loves some good old stats, some cold hard facts, and for Callista in Season 5, she was arguably the most dominant champion in competitive, simply because she was so strong for so long, spanning almost two years of highly competitive pick and ban rates. During Season 5, the year that she was released, Callista had some crazy numbers in pro play. In top 5 regions, she had a 70% presence, meaning overall pick and ban ratio. With 339 picks and 859 bans, she was the most popular champion throughout the entire season. And of those 339 picks, she racked up 195 wins and 144 losses. Her overall win rate was 58%, and some of the best Callistas in the world proved just how powerful she could be. For SKT's Bang, he was 13-0 on Callista. For KT's Def, he was 10-4, and, and for Snake from the LPL, their ADC Crystal was 14-4. The funny thing about Callista that season is that the better you were, the better she got. Her win rate was bogged down by lower and weaker tiered regions. If you remove SEA, which is technically a power region, but did have a bad win rate on Callista across their 21 games, and if you remove the two games from Brazil, then you're left with four major regions, NA, Korea, EU, and China. The average Callista win rate for those regions was a little bit higher, at 60%. But if you look at the best region, you know, the most dominant region ever that won Worlds that year and the year before that and the year before that, you know, those darn Koreans, well, they had a win rate of 65% on Callista, which was the highest of any region. The best players were unsurprisingly using Callista in the best ways, and that's what a really powerful champion can do. Powerful champions really don't care if everybody can pilot them, as long as a few people are good enough to make them broken, then that's really how you know it's a very strong champion. Another thing that can indicate how strong a champion is, is not just towards the rest of the game, but relative just to their own role as well. Something that made Callista so powerful is that none of the other most picked ADCs had particularly good matchups against her. All of the most played ADCs didn't even approach a 50% win rate against her, as her worst matchups would still seem pretty favorable. Statistically, only two losing matchups were Lucian, who fared pretty well against Callista, winning the majority of those 25 games, and Urgot, who also played 25 games against her and did quite well, and this was probably her biggest counterpick. Keep in mind that this was the old Urgot, who for the most part in his League of Legends career was a dead and useless champion. The entire reason that he was reworked was because he just flat out sucked and was horrifically ugly to stare at when playing. He was a total joke of a champion, but in Season 5, he was seen as a strong bot lane carry. Frozen Heart was a pretty common build for him because even though he was a carry champion, he did like the mana items, CDR items, and of course some tankiness because of his low range. There was a game in the LMS playoffs that on picked Urgot and destroyed Callista, ending the game with a 12-2-6 score while Callista was just 3-3-2. She had one or two bad matchups and that was it. And other than that, she was the best champion in the game hands down for the entirety of Season 5, an entire year. Think about how hard she fell. She was such a contested pick and was so strong that the best ADCs in the world didn't even lose on her to now being a champion that is picked sparingly and recently is never even picked. 
And her story isn't much better in solo queue. In fact, it's way worse because in solo queue she is a total dumpster fire. She holds consistently the worst win rate for ADCs. Actually, the worst part about this story is that she not only has a terrible win rate, but she's picked so infrequently that she doesn't even show up on the tier list section on websites like u.gg. You have to press show all because her pick rate is less than 1% in her own role. That's pretty sad. So how did she have such a massive collapse? What happened here? It's pretty vital to know that when Callista was put into the game on patch 4.20, her abilities did work quite differently than they do now. To start, as we said, she gained double the range on her hop when she used her passive leaping backwards. On top of that, the distance and the speed was not interrupted by attack speed slows, whereas now if you wither her or if you play Nasus against Callista, she basically cannot be a champion for a couple of seconds. Also, her W passive was insane, with the damage being upwards of 20% max health damage, and her auto attacks used to deal 100% of her AD, which is normal for every other champion in the game, but nowadays they only deal 90%. Her rend did not stack up when it was on cooldown like it does now, and in general, her passive just felt much stronger. It flew a bit faster, she jumped a little bit further, and the attack speed benefit was just a little bit more. Another key point is that on her release, she was seen as much worse than she really was because even Riot was doing the wrong builds. They told us not to build the right items. In the champion spotlight, they have Infinity Edge as well as Static Shiv, items which she literally never builds. Possibly because of Riot's video and her recommended items being pretty bad, people were building her exactly like a normal crit marksman and maxing her Q because the Q does have a pretty good base damage scaling once you get a couple of points into it. However, it did become pretty clear early on that this didn't feel right. You didn't have really any insane synergy with crits like Caitlyn does, and you don't really need attack damage the same way you value getting off more auto attacks and having attack speed, and your E and passive is basically your entire kit. So it was found out to build some other items, like this one. Before Hurricane was a common item for ADCs and a lot of the crit marksmen in the game, it was actually just an on-hit item, perfect for the likes of Kale, Kog'Ma, and Teemo. Later on down the road on 5.22 for pre-season 6, it was reworked into now having a zeal and far less attack speed, but giving it of course crit chance. But back then, it had 70% attack speed. Yes, 70%. As soon as the synergy was found out, it really sparked her popularity and Callista was never going back to crit. The thing is, she still builds this item today even though it's not nearly as effective for her just because the added wave clear and synergy with the bolts applying ren stacks is just too good. So instead, let's take a look at some of her common builds from 2015 and specifically from the World Championship just to get an idea of what she was building. Let's see here. Well, uh, we have Bork Hurricane Last Whisper, Bork Hurricane Last Whisper, Bork Hurricane Last Whisper, Bork Hurricane Last Whisper Bloodthirster, Bork Hurricane Last Whisper Bloodthirster, Bork Hurricane Last Whisper Bloodthirster, Bork Hurricane Last Whisper Bloodthirster QSS, Bork Hurricane Last Whisper Bloodthirster QSS, Bork Hurricane Last Whisper Bloodthirster QSS. Yeah, uh, her build was pretty standardized back in the day, and pretty much in back-to-back -back games, on October 2nd that day, Sven and Deft finished with the exact same score of 6-0 and 9, and almost built the exact same items. The only exception is that Sven went for a different boot enchantment and had 6 more minutes to buy a Spectre's Cowl, so I, I guess good for you Sven, at least you didn't buy QSS, breaking the meta I guess. She would get a couple of tweaks during the early part of Season 5 from Riot being buffed a bit here, changed a bit there, and moved around a bit in the meta a couple of times, and then she would end up receiving a buff on patch 5.1, which helped but ultimately was not the spiral that led to her insanity. It just took a couple of months of play for people to build her properly and learn to play her correctly. She was super hard to play, so the first couple of months it's understandable that there would be a learning curve for players. But 
once they figured out the mechanics, once they learned how to use her passive to its full potential, and they were able to take the champion to the next level, she would become a monster. With the champion that rose to this level of power this quickly, the only natural progression from Riot was to nerf her. And they did a lot. On 5.4, she got a big nerf. On 5.9, another massive nerf. Why the heck did it ever give increased range backwards anyway? Four patches later, 5.13. Nerfs, nerfs, and more nerfs. We aren't done yet, 5.17. Nerfed big time, we have damage nerfs on W's passive, and a huge cooldown increase for rank 1 on her ultimate. And of course, on 5.22 for that season, we have the big one. Marshall Poi's dash speed is now reduced by attack speed slows. If those attack speed slows weren't already enough to cripple her DPS, now she just becomes useless for a couple of seconds. So alright, she's had her main component of Hurricane change to favor Caitlyn and Jinx much more, she's had multiple massive nerfs, and her passive completely gutted compared to what it used to be. And now, in Season 6, she must not be that great, surely she just dominated at Worlds a few months ago, but seriously, she's been hit hard. Well, no, she was actually still played. That's how powerful this champion was. I want you to understand that she was seriously this strong. At this point, we would reach the most important change in Callista's history. On patch 6.6, .6, we got to the turning point. The math that base attack speed works out to and attack speed growth in League of Legends is a little bit misleading, or at least a little bit hard to understand. The problem is that numbers that don't really seem that important end up being really big buffs or really huge nerfs. It's kind of similar to how base armor is almost a killer or a thriller for a lot of the jungle champions. Champions can drop from literally S tier in being picked all the time, to completely worthless in the jungle role if their base armor gets reduced by more than 5. Sorry Jarvan. Anyway, for those ADCs and the traditional marksmen, champions that build a lot of attack speed, base attack speed has a lot to do with their items helping them become stronger and increasing their DPS. It's very possible to do the math, and I will leave a link to the League of Legends wiki article that provides all of the calculations, but they do make my job a little bit easier here by outright stating it for us. As it says in quotes, bonus attack speed stacks additively, and each bonus point acquired directly affects its statistic. Bonus attack speed is a percentage of the base attack speed, therefore champions with higher base attack speed benefit more from bonus attack speed. Alright, cool. Got it. Makes sense, right? Okay, uh, 6.6. .6. Callista. Attack speed growth reduced. Okay, bad for her, but fair enough, the champion is good. Ah, but here we go, here's the change that matters. Base attack speed reduced to 0.644 from 0.694. This was such a big nerf that her win rate dropped by over 8%. However, in compensation, Sentinel was given a new passive. Callista gains attack speed when she's near her linked Oathsworn. This change would end up defining what Callista's true problems were, and what a headache it would become for Riot. The thing is that you can recover from an item becoming worse for you. You can recover from a direct nerf as long as they at least help and compensate in other ways. You can recover from Riot changing a toxic mechanic in your kit, and at least acknowledging that, you know what, maybe Aurelia's ultimate did not need to disarm people. But here's more base damage so you can at least burst them a bit easier. 
However, we would all find out that what is very hard to recover from though, is that in order to be a champion, you have to be near your support. The reason that Kalista was one of the worst champions in solo queue is that your DPS was completely shot without your oath sworn near you, and because you max your W last, you are stuck with a crappy compensation of 10% attack speed for almost the entire game. And again, that's if your support is next to you. At times, the professionals could make this work, and she was still being picked because of the massive objective control within her kit. A Callista with 3 items cannot be outsmited no matter how hard you tried. However, this would start a massive discrepancy between pro and solo queue. For a long time, she was just worthless in solo queue because it's really hard to communicate with your random auto-filled support who picks Nautilus support, misses 3 hooks in laning phase, you flame him and then he roams around the map. The fact that the pros have synergy and you can stay on comms, and you at least know hey you need to stand near me in order for me to be a champion, makes it a much bigger nerf than it really leads on. It ended up removing her from solo queue viability entirely. Riot would be stuck and not sure what to do with her. She was still too strong and her R was way too good when playing 5v5s, so it was nerfed again, now to well over 2 minutes at rank 1 on patch 7.18. And then, she went dark, the lights were shut off, and she started to fade away. I have really no concrete explanation why, but ever since Season 7, the champion has never really felt the same. I think her passive is just buggy now for whatever reason, and even though from day 1 of her release it says in the kit that you cannot cancel auto attacks on Kalista, for some reason it seems to happen all the time, and I'm not really sure why. Take a look at this, ever since patch 7.18, all of a sudden, Callista in the patch notes started receiving a lot of bug fixes. Look at this, 8.3 fixed a bug where you could fail to trigger attacks at high attack speeds. 8.4, the very next patch, bug fix, no longer path towards the blue side fountain if given a movement command to dash while attacking an enemy inhibitor. What? 8.4 was also the patch that they finally gave her the attack speed back by the way, but instead made it so Callista got attack damage near her oath sworn. You know what, thanks right, I mean she was only completely dead in solo queue for just under 2 years, but I guess now is the time to fix it. 9.4, bug fix, can no longer cast rend with insufficient mana. 9.14, bug fix, no longer able to hit multiple enemies if she targets them during her attack animation windup. Dear god, like, the champion didn't even work? They tried on multiple occasions to bring her back. They removed that god-awful W passive like we said. They've given her even more base attack speed than she used to have. They let Ren stack up when it's on cooldown. But there's a problem. ADCs that are viable now are just way stronger in general. The fact that you have to compete with overloaded and insane kits to the tune of Kai'Sa and Zaya, it just makes it really hard to compete. New champions, even though Callista really isn't that old, have surpassed some of the older champions in past seasons. It is true that to begin this season they actually gave her a real buff, which did increase her attack speed growth, AD growth, and base AD, which allows her early game to be strong once again. They also adjusted her power budget a little bit, because her problem was that she was always really strong in competitive play, but they reduced the damage that Ren did to epic monsters, meaning that our favorite blue girl might actually be able to see some love in solo queue. Pretty recently, we saw more buffs on 9.17, more mana, more base AD, which is all great. Something else that was released later on with Runes Reforged was Hail of Blades, which depending on who you ask is the best keystone that she can take. Once again, according to U.GG, Hail of Blades in Precision has almost a 49% win rate, which is at least a little bit better than her overall abysmal win rate of 45.38%. However, approaching Season 10, next season, I think that there's finally some hope for her. If you didn't know, Conqueror is going to be reworked. Let's take a look at what they've done. Basic attacks or spells that deal damage to an enemy champion grant 2 stacks of Conqueror for 8 seconds, gaining X amount of attack damage per stack, but we don't know exactly just how much AD this will be just yet. This stacks up to 10 times. Ranged champions gain only 1 stack per basic attack. When fully stacked, heal for 15% of the damage that you deal to champions. This for ADCs is amazing because the stacks don't fall off so darn fast. 
Technically, right now, ADCs like Draven and Lucian can take Conqueror, but because the stacks fall off so fast as soon as you're out of combat, it's almost never worth taking this rune over PTA. You just don't have that much uptime on it. This new functionality of Conqueror is pretty similar to the old Fervor of Battle Keystone that we used to have, and that's what Callista used to take. If you couple this rune change with the fact that she's being directly buffed for this season and the preseason, there is a reason to be excited. She may finally emerge from the depths of depression that is her current state. It's possible that we could finally see her own the spot of early game, snowball-y, objective-focused marksman that she was always known for. Her synergy with Thresh is something that will always hold a special place in League of Legends players' hearts. And if Lucian and Senna can be a bot lane duo that's unstoppable, if Zaya and Rakan can be the best bot lane you can play in competitive, why can't Callista and Thresh make a comeback too? Surely that can't be too much to ask. For Season 10, we have a new approach from Riot. In the side lanes, we have these outcoves for more outplay potential. We have the Elemental Drakes, putting more emphasis on the bottom side of the map and more emphasis on dragon control. And with some Callista buffs, a couple of rune changes, and maybe a few meta shifts, there's a chance that Callista could come back. You may